I'm Scott, and this is a Del Vecchio resonator guitar. It was made uh, famous by Chet Atkins, and that's why my customer has it. But this guitar has never played in tune the entire time he's owned it, and I figured out why. So I got the Saddlematic here. This little device from Stuart McDonald shows you where the saddle should be. And this guitar has a zero fret right in front of the nut. So I'm going to bring this front edge to the middle of the zero fret. Lock it in, lock it in place. And then flip it around and see where it, it lands down here at the saddle. And what you'll see here is that they hit the nail on the head if this were a classical guitar. Because classical guitar strings, nylon strings, need no compensation at all. So never mind this new slot. I already cut the new slot where it's gonna, where the new saddle is gonna go. Where they put the original saddle was right where the actual scale length ends. Not knowing, I don't know why the Brazilian people did not realize this, that steel strings have to have extra compensation. So. The Saddlematic shows you with these two little pins exactly where the leading edge of the saddle should be. The front edge of the saddle, not the back edge or the middle. That's where the front of the saddle goes. So this bridge can be swiveled also. It just loosely sits in there. So if we need to turn it one way or the other to adjust the, uh, the uh, intonation, then we can do that too afterwards. So. I cut this with a hand saw and flattened out the bottom. We'll be making a plug for where the old saddle went and a new bone saddle with the compensation. I use, also went online and used the Stumac um, fret calculator to make sure they didn't put the frets in the wrong place. And all the frets look like they're pretty much in the right place. I mean, they're close enough anyways. The zero fret's a little off. But this thing was glued in there so strong with like epoxy. I had to heat it up and I actually had to sand off the finish. This uh, rosewood, this Brazilian, has uh, taken on this look of like, it's kind of like almost whitewashed, like the, the polyurethane or the catalyzed finish that they used has uh, kind of lightened over time. Now that I've sanded the finish off this, you can see it's a little bit darker. So it's unfortunate because it's uh, some nice Brazilian rosewood that the finish is all cloudy. Nice stuff. But it's made like a classical guitar flat fretboard. So the saddle doesn't really need to have a, too much of an arch to it. So I went down with my band saw and disc sander and made this little insert. And now I'm going to glue on some Brazilian rosewood veneer on top of it with a gel super glue. Got me some Brazilian here. I'm going to cut little strips of it. with the old X-Acto blade. I'm making it a little wider than my plug. And then I'll glue it on the plug. Now I can try to match the grain up a little bit. You know there's that black strip in there. I get that to line up that would be kind of swell. Wouldn't it? Yeah. I can see that coming along already. Once it's glued down there I can I can trim it. Let's get some little gel super glue on here. That 
was a little too much. Okay, it's a little louder now because I got the fan going. That smell of the accelerator drives me nuts out. I swear it's toxic, but it might not be. Oh, I think I'm running out of super glow. Accelerate me. So now that I got it fit in there, next thing I got to do is make some cuts here and here. Oops, I had super glue all over that area. See if a magic marker will work. I need to put in this binding material right here. Here and here. I don't know why there's a flaw in it right there. Oh, that's where that's where the two pieces came together right there. All right. I've done some crazy stuff, but this got to be the craziest. get it where this, this little piece of binding goes in there. There. Got the gel CA glue in there once again. There. Perfect. Get this trimmed up here. I think I'll glue it in. A little bit of fish glue.
come back tomorrow and sand it up. Put a couple clamps on it, maybe. Who's your buddy? Putty is your buddy. And there's all kinds of little spots that, little gaps. They're really small, but um, I'm going to fill them in with this epoxy putty and make it all smooth before I get it all sanded too much, too far. So, get a razor blade and hack off a little bit of this. Not much. I'm going to take like a little piece of the pie like that. And let's mix it up. Two part epoxy and it has a tan color, a natural pine color. And that'll be perfect because we have a lot of light. A lot of light stuff and some darker stuff, but we'll add the darker stuff as we need to. We don't want to start off with the dark, we start off with the light. And a couple little smushes and we'll start jamming it in there. And then my little secret weapon is uh, simple green or just soapy water of any type. That'll allow you to clean up. And I'm going to clean it off my gloves, I'm going to clean it off my spatula. And I'm going to use it on this little razor blade right here to prevent this stuff from sticking to the blade as I, as I get it off. Get it off the project, man. You can very easily pull it out of these little cracks. Want to push it in, don't want to pull it out. All right, sanded her smooth with some two twenty. And uh, now I'm going to wipe her down with some naphtha, naphtha, naphtha. That cool, refreshing drink. And we see some Brazilian beauty. She's a Brazilian beauty, guys. Oh, ma. Oh, my, my. Now, I've got a little shalaka laka laka Now, this will be the final appearance to this. It's not going to look much different than this from this point on, except that I'm going to color in the putty and fill in a couple grain lines that don't match up.
Oops. Starting to get an idea. Um, so I got it to this color by using the Prevail sprayer. And what that is, is uh, it's just a little glass jar. You unscrew the lid, you put your lacquer in there. It comes with a little tube and uh, you spray with it. You have little nozzles built right in. And you know, I just set the, the little hockey puck, you know, it was, it's a bridge, I call it a hockey puck. But it's, uh, I glued it to a little board and just put it right next to my uh, exhaust fan. I'll, I'll be posting these still photos so you can kind of see the process. I didn't want to leave the, the video running the whole time, but I got a, a bone saddle roughed in. And I'm going to go start going through at the 12th fret and seeing where the intonation points need to be and get this all kind of dialed in and then we'll be able to give her a sound check. Glue it in here with a little bit of fish glue. I guess the whole reason I got the lacquer out and wanted to spray that is because that old urethane had, you know, it gotten all milky and stuff over the years. And this had this really brilliant orangish red color. It was really rich. It looked beautiful, but it looked really out of place on the guitar. And using those opaque brown white um, pigments really kind of helped camouflage this fake wood grain that I painted in. So I'm glad I did it. It yellowed the white binding material inlay a little bit, but I'm not going to scrape it clean or anything. I'm just going to leave it brown. And now I realized that the darn guitar has this little handle that bolts down right over top of the whole thing. So, I mean, that's going to hide the whole thing anyways. So I don't know why I really... I guess I'm a perfectionist, that's why. Okay, we'll check our intonation. New strings. Start here. Twelfth fret intonation. Try that on your Del Vecchio with the saddle cut right through the center of the biscuit. Oh yeah, and by the way, I've been calling it a hockey puck and a bridge. It's actually called a biscuit. I just had a customer over who corrected me.
now this piece goes on here. You can't even really see the plug that I made. But I'm glad I did the refinishing anyways because uh, you do still see the all the, the finish on it and whatnot. So. Sorry I called that a hockey puck. It's called a biscuit now. And uh, I, I'm from Michigan. I don't know about this stuff, man. We know about our Chevys, though. Well, thanks for tuning in and sticking around. Have a great weekend, and we'll catch you later.